It's great to be back with you to talk about the NXP enabled smart home. And we're here in front of the smart home dashboard that's showing all devices in your home working together and giving you feedback so you can interact and optimize your home. It's working together with smartphones that are enabled with NXP, secure mobile wallet, UWB that can have your safe credentials knowing who you are and where you are and understand where you are within 10 centimeters. And with these phones combined with NXP's technology to secure all of the data running in your house and access to your house, leveraging our advanced processing on IDMX 8 as well as Layerscape, we can secure your home from people who might want to attack your home by throwing data at it or trying to break the security capability that you have to protect your data. And the dashboard is showing us an intrusion alert as well as it is showing different security conditions. And in this particular case, we had someone who tried to flood our network with data in order to compromise our home. The security that we have both in knowing the credentials of who you are in your phone and protecting your network is part of what NXP brings to make your home the safest and most secure place to protect your life and your family. So with that, let's go into the house and let's see how UWB enabled phones knowing who I am or a child who has a phone knowing who the child is enters the home. So let's go in. So as we enter the house, it understands my preferences. It starts to adapt by opening the blinds. It adjusts the temperature. It modifies the air conditioning capabilities as well as turns on the lights. And in addition, we have more smart home devices that are enabled with NXP technology. And not only enabled with NXP technology, we have taken the latest interoperability protocol matter, and we have a huge number of devices, eight different manufacturers that are all operating together in this smart home. And they are devices that are measuring the quality of the air, that are looking for leaks, that are detecting temperature and environmental conditions. And we have devices that even are smart plugs, but not just smart plugs, matter enabled routers that just seamlessly fit into the environment as opposed to big ugly boxes that are all around and scattered in your house. These devices, including the safe and smart stovetop, is even further enabled with capabilities such as proximity detection. We're running proximity detection that can use motion to turn on your stove. It can uh, detect proximity where you're close to the button, so you don't even have to touch the surface. Never have to worry about burning yourself. And you can have different controls by touching or pressing in order to enable different functions on your stove. And we're doing this all on a single microcontroller with tiny ML. We're running the ability to look for anomaly detection or in this case, proximity on an MCU using AI and ML that's on the edge. And all of this is enabled on these devices by bringing together an ecosystem of capability that starts with taking these devices like the gateway that's enabled in this device that just looks like a plug. I can introduce it into my environment in a very safe and secure way with edge lock to go capability that leverages the technology in your smartphone for your secure mobile wallet, that technology that allows people to enter in stadiums. We use that for entering devices into your home and having them recognized as trusted devices that operate. And then we enable the home with NXP that's all matter compliant, running the devices in this environment that you're in today. We have matter controllers. We have different levels of performance that are running tri-radio capability, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, as well as Bluetooth. 
and doing it in a way that allows a common standard or language with endpoint devices that are enabled with new capability like the touch. And in this case, there's also voice, speech to intent. Hey matter, I'm cold. And then it recognizes a phrase and then it starts to adapt in terms of the temperature of the house. In addition to these devices, making them easy to enter the home in terms of trusted devices and remove them when you don't want them to interact with your house, make these devices easy to use, easy to fix. We're also working on making the development environment easier to develop. We're working with partners like MicroEJ, where we're creating a container-like environment for easy software porting all the way down to MCUs. And it scales up to our advanced apps processors and then a whole range of processing in between. Simply porting software and developing more capability that goes from MCUs to apps processors, which will enable a richer ecosystem of capability, richer ecosystems of apps and functions that will operate in your home as you identify those things that you want to do to anticipate and automate. And now, let's talk about the living room in a different UWB use case as opposed to the UWB in your phone. So let's go into the living room. As we go into the living room, the living room will start to adjust blinds going down, knowing I want to share some entertainment, watch a game, enjoy a great piece of uh, music, or watch a movie that's really immersing you into the sound. And in this case, instead of UWB being in the phone, UWB is in each of the devices around you. And in this case, speakers, as well as the radar technology to know that we're present in the living room. And it's giving us feedback within the living room that shows that my speaker positions are good. In this case, if the speaker angle or the position is off, this environment tells me I have a problem and my sound quality isn't going to be as good. UWB technology not only enables me to know where the speaker is within 10 centimeters, it gives me information on angle that I can use to really optimize and have the home tell me what's wrong and easily have it corrected. So as we go and we fix the speaker's position, have the house recognize that everything is working properly, we can enjoy the game on the television, and we can use the different capability to make it a very simple and easy environment for us to either have a safer, better, or more secure home environment for all to enjoy. And with that, it's been very exciting to talk to you about the latest capability of a matter-enabled home. And I'm excited to bring other capabilities to you as we develop and we expand on what can happen. So thank you. Haku and I are going to go watch the game. So. Talk to you soon.